Hi, my name is Ben Alcock. I'm an associate consultant here at Revelwood Incorporated. And today we're going to be going through how to create a dimension in Workday Adaptive Planning. So first we navigate to modeling and we go to model management. So management, and of course we come to dimensions. So to create your dimension parent, you click create a new dimension up here at the top. And for this example, we're going to be using apples from New Jersey. So we name it NJ apples and click save. And from here, there are three ways that we could create dimension values. So the first is manually. So to create a manual dimension value, you come here, you assign it a code. So let's say we're going to do uh, red delicious. So in general and adaptive, you need the, the code cannot have spaces, but that is not the case in dimensions. However, when it comes to future parts of setting up your instance, you might need different SQL language that can't include spaces or other special characters. So we're gonna to stick to uh, keeping the codes spaceless and use underscores instead. So you can see here, I'm naming it Red Delicious and or coding it Red Delicious and in the name, I'm including the space. And we'd click save. So if you only have a few dimension values, this would be a fine method of going about it and probably the most straightforward, manually creating each value. But the best way of going about it and the one that I would recommend is through an import. So to do that, we would come up here to the import dimension structure and we would download a template. So once that template has downloaded, uh, we'll open it up and we can add the values. It's taking a little while here to open. So once you have the template open, uh, there you see the very first tab is an instructions page. The instructions page is very useful. It shows you what values can possibly go in each of the columns and you know a sort of description about what comes with those values. So you know, you can see here it's saying that for the description, you only want to use alphanumeric characters and you can use spaces. For the parent, you need to use the exact code. And for the type, it's either standard or level or you leave it blank. So we're coming over to where we'd actually import the values. Uh, you can see that there are a boatload of columns here for you to put values in, uh, whether it's parent, description, dimension description, dimension name format. Really the only three you need to use are column A, dimension name, column F, dimension value code, and column G, dimension value name. In column A, we put what the actual dimension these values are going into are, which is New Jersey apples, NJ apples. Uh, you need to come a line, you need to uh, go down a line and uh, input your dimension value code. So we'll quickly go and grab our list of apples in New Jersey. Um, we've got that list here. Come back and we'll put them in the name. So as I mentioned before, uh, in dimensions, you are able to include spaces, uh, though we, as best practice, tend to avoid that because we want them to be conducive to other areas of adaptive and flow smoothly through the integration. So for these, uh, dimension value codes. I'm going to copy and paste the list, but I'm going to do a quick find and replace and get rid of any spaces so that this flows into adaptive well. All right, C6 replacements. And that is a valid import template for adaptive dimensions. So from here, we'll save this. We'll save it as NJ apples dim import all right save to my downloads and now we will come back to adaptive and we will import this so there are three options uh, there is a delete function we don't want to click that and there is a reload function we also want to avoid the reload because that will get rid of all of our data so 
Uh, update and depend is the one we want to go with. We choose our file. I'm going to go to my downloads folder. So, and here is the New Jersey Apple's dimension import. So we open that up, um, update and append, always double check that and we'll click upload. And you can see it went in successfully. We have our New Jersey apples, Red Delicious, Braeburn, Golden Delicious, um, and they've gone in successfully. So this through import is a great way to bring in your dimension values. There is another method which sometimes is a better option, sometimes isn't, depending on uh, how far along the integration process you are. Um, <clears throat> that would be by coming over to the rights panel on your dimension screen and selecting this data import automatically creates dimension values checkbox. So a reason you might want to use this is potentially there are a list of new dimension values that don't exist in the adaptive system. And rather than going through the import process, you could just uh, tag them through the actuals import and they will be uh, uh, created in the system. A reason you might want to avoid using this checkbox would be when there are many people working on the data, some of these values could have typos, some of these values could be the name, the dimension name and not the dimension code, and let's say that they are different, then it would create a new value rather than assigning it to the right place. This is an option we use carefully and only when we know that it won't mess up anything as we have it. Usually we tend to keep it off, except for scenarios when we know we're adding a new value. And that is, that is it for creating dimension values in adaptive planning. Um, it's very straightforward, uh, it's very simple. Uh, to summarize, there are the three ways. You can do it manually uh, in the actual interface. You can do it through an import template, a dimension value import template, or you can do it through your actual data import where it's created automatically through the data. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at info at revelwood.com.